Hey, Hockey Nuts, Wayne here. Just trying to get things caught up around here. And a couple of things I got to get caught up on is the eliminated team reports that I had started. I've done one already. I've done the Vancouver Canucks. And I found out the next morning that um, I that another team actually got eliminated at the same time as the Vancouver Canucks. So Vancouver losing their game. Of course, they got eliminated on the uh, 14th, but at the same time, Arizona Coyotes, uh, thanks to tie breaks, got eliminated as well. I had them sitting right on that bubble, right on that, basically, they were at the point where they had to win every game, and the eighth place team in uh, the uh, playoff standings had to lose every game in order for Arizona to get in. But alas, when you consider tie breaks, Arizona was in fact eliminated the same night that Vancouver was. So Vancouver officially is the first team eliminated. Arizona is the second. So let's get going on talking about the Arizona Coyotes since they are eliminated. All right, here we are. We got the Arizona Coyotes board up and I've already made some Hen scratches on it. So let's take a look and see what we have. First and foremost, uh, the Arizona Coyotes uh, got off to a horrible, horrible start in the um, regular season. They lost their first uh, 11 games, I think it was. I don't have the stats right in front of me, but uh, they lost their first 11 games or so, and then they just had a horrible, horrible start. And they also won just two of their first 20 games. Uh, so they were behind right off the bat and pretty much out of it before the season even got going. But on a good note, Arizona Coyotes have been playing very well of late. And uh, they've actually been uh, above 500 since basically the uh, mid-February or so. Um, so things are definitely looking up for the Coyotes. But... Bottom line is they have been eliminated, so let's take a look at their roster situation. First and foremost, okay, there, got my pencil set up. Had a little trouble with that there. Um, still learning how to use this whole setup, so. All right, so I've already made some scratches. First and foremost, let's took a, take a look at the roster as it sits. Um, they've got a number of veterans, but this is a very young team, probably one of the youngest teams in the league thus far. All right, but they have a number of unrestricted free agents that are going to be leaving the team or probably will be leaving the team. I can't imagine a, an unrestricted free agent is going to want to stick around for a full rebuild, particularly anybody who over the age of 30. So looking at that, um, now there's one name I did cross off that isn't actually an unrestricted free agent, Dave Boland right here. He's got a, he's battling a chronic back injury that he can't seem to get over. So uh, it looks as though everybody's saying he probably is not going to play again. So I've gone ahead and crossed him off this list. He only has one more season left on his contract. And um, it's highly doubtful that he's going to come back. So I've gone ahead and crossed him off. Uh, Brad Richardson, uh, Zach Ronaldo, Luke Shen, Kevin Connaughton, and Antti Ranta are all unrestricted free agents as of July 1st of this year. The only one that I potentially see the Arizona Coyotes signing would be Antti Ranta. Uh, and that's, of course, if Ranta wants to come back to Arizona. Uh, it's actually a good place for him. He was the starter there. Um, most teams, if he goes to another team, chances are he's going to end up being a backup. And if the guy wants to start and be a starter, he's probably going to have to find a way to get um, stay with Arizona. And as far as uh, signing free agents, Arizona has plenty of cap space. They've got, as of um, the date that they were eliminated, they had $16.23 million under the cap. And that's assuming the cap stays flat, which they're expecting it's not. It's They're expecting it to go up 3 to $5 million. So, um, So essentially, Arizona has plenty of cap space to play with uh, for anti Ranta to resign. So... I would expect that he will probably re-sign with the uh, Arizona Coyotes unless uh, unless the Coyotes decide to go out and try to find a goaltender who's better than him. But I, I, I doubt they will. 
Uh, they also have Darcy Kemper. So um, if worst case scenario, Antti Ranta decides not to come back to Arizona, they still have Kemper and then they will back him up with Aiden Hill or they may sign a backup uh, somewhere else. Uh, they've got a couple of other goalie prospects, Sean McGuire and uh, Hunter Miska, who are both tied up with the organization. McGuire will be a restricted free agent uh, but uh, Miska has still got another year uh, under his entry-level contract, so he's not going anywhere anytime soon. So, goaltending situation for Arizona will either be Ranta or somebody that they sign off the street at this point, unless they bring up call up one of these young guys. Now, speaking of young guys, they have a number of prospects that are high-end prospects, thanks to the poor finishes that they've had year after year after year. Uh, they've got a number of first-round draft picks in their system, uh, all recent draft picks, one, two, three first-round picks from 2015 and a fourth first-round pick from 2017, a couple of second-rounders and a bunch of third-rounders, whole bunch of third-rounders, all picked up within the last couple of years with the exception of Andrew Campbell, who's kind of a minor league, um, minor league uh, player. I, it was unlikely that he'll play. But the players that I have marked here are players that I expect will um, will challenge for a job with Arizona next fall. Um, so these would be good guys to replace uh, the guys that are leaving here. In fact, it'll be an upgrade because Dylan Strom, Lawson Krause are both high-end prospects. They're expected to make the team, if not this year, the following year. Both of them are 20 and 21. I fully expect that those two uh, will likely join the big team in the fall for sure. Uh, and then the other the other high-end prospects they got is Nick Merkley, Pierre Oliver-Joseph, uh, Ryan McInnes, Philip Westerland, and Brandon Hickey. Uh, those guys should all challenge for jobs in the fall. No guarantee that they're going to make it. But um, in addition to all these guys, all these guys on the roster, the ones that I've marked here, are all first or second round draft picks in their respective years. Now, some of these go back a ways. Luke Shen in 2008, first round draft pick, uh, 2004, 2009. So some of these go back a ways, but ultimately they were all first or second round draft picks. So on paper, this team should be pretty good. And if you look at the last probably three weeks, they're a pretty good team. They've been playing very well lately. So um, so I expect the stay at the bottom of the Western Conference is going to be short. In fact, I think it's already over. I don't believe, if I look at the standings now, I don't believe the Arizona Coyotes are in last place right now. They've already climbed out of it. And they certainly won't be next year. Will they make the playoffs? Eh, I don't think so. Uh, I think they're still another year away from being able to contend for a playoff spot. But um, they'll get another high-end draft pick this year. They do still retain their first-round pick for this year. They have Minnesota's second, which, depending on how far Minnesota goes in the playoffs, will um, it'll be mid to late in that round. So uh, they did give up their second there. And then they still retain their third and fourth. They gave up their five. And the six and seven this year they still have, although six and seven it's crapshoot on what kind of players you're going to get, uh, even five for that matter. But in the top four rounds they do have four picks in the top four rounds, um, even though the second one's not theirs, they still do have one anyway. And this first round pick should be uh, in the top ten. Or well, actually, it'll be probably in the top six, depending on where they finish in the uh, in the regular season. Uh, so they should get a pretty good player in the draft this year. And then, of course, they own lots of draft picks in the following two years. They own all their own in the next two years. Plus, they own Calgary's third, which is a conditional. And they own Minnesota uh, Pittsburgh's sixth. So, bottom line is, Arizona's got plenty of cap space. Uh, not sure they're going to um, uh, go out and sign big-name free agents. I wouldn't expect that to happen because... John Chaka himself has said that Arizona is a budget team. Uh, so even though they're well under the cap, they have their own internal cap that they have to deal with. Uh, so uh, don't look for them to go spending right up to the cap. 
Um, but they're going to continue to develop from within. They're going to continue to develop all this young talent that they've got here and attempt to get all this young talent that they've got better uh, to get better. I mean, you've got Dvorak, you've got Dauphin, you've got uh, uh, Panic's probably about where he's going to be. Max Domi, uh, Clayton Keller, and, and Nick Cousins, Brendan Perlini, uh Christian Fisher. See, these are all guys under 25. Jacob Chitkrin uh, and Aiden Hill, one of the goaltenders. Uh, all guys under 25 years old. So it's a very young team, and they can get better, and they probably will get better. So the future's up for Arizona. They're probably not going to make the playoffs next year, but they will be better than last this year. Uh, that I can assure you. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and end this review of this team. We'll take another look at them this summer, probably somewhere around the trade deadline. And then, um, not trade deadline, the uh, free agency period. And then we'll um, we'll revisit them again in the fall as we approach the regular season. So with that, we're going to go ahead and end it. Let me know what you think Arizona should do with their team in the comments below. And until then, we'll catch you in the next one.